name is Maureen Canila. Um, I am the Vice President of the Haematology Nurses and Healthcare Professionals Group, which we shortened to HNHCP because it's just much easier to say. Um, and we, I am currently working as a bone marrow transplant coordinator in St. James's Hospital in Dublin. And I'll hand you over to Eric to introduce himself. So my name is Erik Aerts. I'm the president of the Hematology Nurses and Healthcare Professionals Group, HNHCP. And I'm working as a nurse manager in hematology at the University Hospital in Zurich. And well, we are very delighted to be here in Madrid at the EHA conference um, because it's such a huge conference where uh, a lot of healthcare workers are coming from the whole world together to um, educate themselves on the uh, very different topics on non-malignant and malignant hematological diseases. And that's also our aim of HNHCP, that we want to educate nurses and other healthcare, uh, healthcare professionals on the different kind of hematological um, malignant and non-malignant diseases. And to this end, um, we develop educational resources for nurses and healthcare professionals on a multidisciplinary format. Um, we involve doctors, patient groups, patient advocacy groups and patients in developing education programmes. And at this stage we have six programmes active at the moment. We have ITP, which will be um, updated this year. We also have a programme on myeloma, which will be updated this year. And we also have programmes on lymphoma, acute leukaemias, chronic leukaemias and CAR-T. And this year we'll also bring out a programme on bispecific antibodies and bispecific therapies. Um, all of the programmes have are uh, available in five languages. They're available in English, Spanish, Italian, German and French. So that they're accessible worldwide and we know the reach of them is worldwide. We've had from everywhere, we know from looking at our website. They're free to access, they're downloadable, we also have printed copies of them. And we also have an online education module for each of these programmes available free of charge for health nurses and healthcare professionals to access. Um, and it's really important for us that it's kind of that multidisciplinary, what's important to the patient. Um, and accessible material for nurses in all areas, both because we know it's very easy if you're like Eric and myself, you're working in a big centre where you've got lots of resources available. But an awful lot of patients are now being cared for in regional hospitals um, and smaller units. And those nurses need access to these newer therapies and the information about how to look after these diseases. And like this big EHA conference, we as HNHCP have also our yearly um, international uh, conference held on uh, the uh, say, 8th and 9th of, 8th and 9th 9th of, of November. November this year at the Univ uh, University Hospital in Zurich. It will be a hybrid uh, conference with, uh, and at this international conference we will highlight topics like uh, thalassemia in conjunction with the uh, thalassemia uh, International patient, Federation uh, organization. We will uh, highlight topics like myeloma, new trends in myeloma. We will highlight acute myeloid leukemia, but also we will highlight um, some ethical topics like taking care for elderly patients because we see in hematology more and more elderly patients. Um, treated with, with new treatments, which is a challenge for nurses and other healthcare professionals um, also in the upcoming years. So we are also looking at new trends. And we always, and we did it also this year in the, in the next conference, we included patients. So some patients will tell their stories um, about their, their uh, pathways they, they have, uh, um, uh, yeah, they, they have done in, in, uh, in their uh, diseases. 
And coming on from that part of looking at the reason that it's important to attend meetings like this is assessing fitness for, for treatment in general. You, you know, so many of the talks at the meeting this year and also, you know, different things are going around is looking at how you can assess fitness for treatment. And our own meeting, we're doing a whole session on frailty, assessing fitness for treatment, and also looking a little bit at like prehab and rehab um, and helping patients maintain their fitness through treatment. Not just are they fit enough to have the treatment, but how can we help them that they're not completely deconditioned at the end of treatment. And it's really important to look at things like that. And um, having the pay and we work together with the likes of the Lymphoma Co Coalition, Myeloma Patients Europe, um, like we participated in a panel discussion on Thursday evening here looking at shared decision making with patients. Um, and also trying to get the nurse's voice more involved. The one thing we you notice is unless you're coming from very big countries and things like that, that sometimes it can either be patients or physicians and that trying to get the, the nurse is the link between both of these groups. And it's really important for nurses and the nursing voice to be involved and also to be visible at these meetings that we're just not worker bees in the background, but that we're involved in the decisions and we're involved in how these treatments, because an awful lot of nurses are involved in communicating these decisions and also helping decision, the patient navigate the pathway um, because they have limited time with the physician maybe. They have limited time with thing at that stage, but sometimes while you're delivering your treatment at the bedside or in the day ward or an ambulatory care setting, um, that you have the ability to help patients navigate these difficult decisions that they're having to make or how their choices go as they go along. Yeah, beside education, also within our, within our community, like here at EHA, networking is extremely important, not to reinvent the wheel in terms of new, new projects, etc., by yourself, but networking in the global community. So also here we meet physicians, we meet uh, nursing specialists, and we will do the same at our conference because also networking and sharing your experiences is extremely um, important. Finally, to have better outcomes for patients and their caregivers, that's our aim. But the other thing also is, is that by that networking, an awful lot of patient care developments have come through word of mouth. It's by being able to contact somebody and say, I have this difficult situation. How do you deal with it? Or have you any advice about how you do it? And being able to know that there's people out there that you can contact and being able to you know, put information up on websites of where it contacts and links to other places and knowing where that is to be able, you know, is, re, is vital to being able to communicate that knowledge among nurses and that, you know, that there is so much good that can be got from different areas within nursing and the wider community. And it's not just haematology, but obviously, you know, within the wider oncology community. But what happens is you have oncology nurses get ask haematology questions because that might be the only person that they have that resource there to contact. And um, so it's really important to be able to, to do that, you know, you know cancer therefore thing. And as treatments go on, treatments that we are commonly using every day, chemotherapy and things like that, but when the, with the gene therapies and things like that, the treatments that we're giving to patients are moving into other disciplines and other non-malignant conditions, things that are not cancer. Like, you know, we had a conversation with somebody here at EHA about, um, you know, gene therapy and the, the conditioning they're giving people for their gene therapy. And they're having to learn a new language and go in with chemotherapy. And like giving chemotherapy to people that don't have cancer is challenging. Um, and it's, you know, it's scary for patients too. And it's really important that, you know, nurses are involved in those conversations and have the knowledge and the information to be able to deliver these treatments and this care safely. So please come to our conference in November and join us and visit our website www.handcare.org. <laughs>